everyone, Guy from Midwinter Minis here. Welcome to episode 8 of our speed painting Blackstone Fortress series. In this episode, I'll show you how to paint the rogue psychers in a fast effective colour scheme. No Penny this time, she's been working some crazy night shifts and hasn't had much free time. However, she'll be presenting all of the next video, so that'll balance things out nicely for you. Now starting off, you'll want to cover any imperfections in the bases with whatever you like. I'm using aquarium gravel, sand and super glue. Now once you're happy with that, prime the models grey. As we'll be working with mostly thin layers of paint and washes, I'll apply a zenithal highlight of white spray from the top down. This instantly creates natural shadows, a great place to work from. And once your primer is dry, we'll get straight on with the painting. The first colour is red, fitting the theme that I've chosen for my Servants of the Abyss. Thin your red paint with a tiny touch of water and paint the outside of their big billowing coats. Now leave the inner lining grey. Don't worry too much about being neat at the moment, just try to leave the grey trousers clean. And here's what they look like with one coat of red paint. Next we'll paint their skin. Mix up a very pale tone by adding white to your flesh colour in a one to one mix, then thin with a bit of water and paint the heads, hands and feet. I forgot to do it at this stage, but also one of them has a tentacle coming out of his chest. I'm sure Penny would have something to say about that. And paint that with the flesh tone and also paint the underside of their fur pelts. If you get this flesh colour on any of the red areas, neaten up using your red. It will probably still be wet on your palette at this point. Next, we'll paint their armour, staffs, their chains and restraints, and their pistol handles using our silver paint. At this point, try to be a little neat when you're near the red and flesh areas and the trousers which we still want to keep grey. If you do make a mistake here and there, no problem, just neaten them up before we carry on. Speaking of which, we'll crack out our grey paint now and make sure the trousers are completely grey and also paint the pistol holster, the inner lining of their coats and inside their big collars. While the grey is wet on our palette, add a drop of white in it to create a light grey and apply this to any protruding prominent parts of the grey areas you want to highlight. This will add a bit of variation to the fabric, and it's not an essential step, and you'll hardly notice it in the finished model, but it's good practice for trying out your brush highlights. Right, so here's me realising I've forgotten the flesh bits that I mentioned earlier. And sorted. Now we'll use our white paint, thinned with a touch of water, and paint the fur side of their pelts. Now that's done, grab your dry brush and give any rocky parts you added to the base a quick dry brush of white. And that's almost all of our base coating done. We'll use our gold paint to colour the pointy ends of their staffs, and we'll also paint the little chaotic trim on the front corners of their coats. And line the front edges of the coat with gold on these parts too. Finally, we'll use our black paint thinned with a little water to paint the flat surfaces of the bases and their rims. And here's how they look with all the base colours done. And once you're satisfied that the base coats are dry, we'll use our black wash to shade all of the silver and grey areas. Cover the trousers, the armour plates and the shafts of their staffs. And don't forget the undershirt collar around their necks, as well as the lining of their coats. And while we've got our black wash out, sparingly apply a little to their eyes and mouth to start building up easy detail. And 
We'll also use our black wash to shade the rubble on the bases if you added any. And it's really hard to get your brush into their collars without accidentally getting black wash on their big bulbous heads. <laughs> so use your flesh tone to neaten up their skin now if you made any mistakes. And once you're happy with your wash, give it about 10 to 15 minutes to dry fully. To kill some time, I listened to the awesome track that Choir Giant made for this channel that's playing right now. He's got an awesome, bombastic post-rock track called Still Heart on Spotify. You should check it out if you're a fan of that kind of thing. Not right now though, finish this video first. Now the rogue psychers are dry, it's time to add the brown wash to basically every other surface you didn't apply the black wash to. So that's the skin, both sides of the pelts, the coat and the gold parts at the top of the staffs. I also added some to the debris too. Now once that brown wash is dry, the basic speed painting part of this theme is done. Pretty awesome looking and they took very little time. I would say less than an hour in total so far, outside of drying time. You could probably do it faster too if you didn't have a camera right in front of your face like me. If you want to take this paint job a little further, there are a few easy steps we can do to make the colours more vibrant and the details pop a little more. Now this is where I usually say, but like, comment and subscribe first, but today I want to tell you that I've set up a Midwinter Minis Instagram. So go and add me? I think that's what you're supposed to say. But not now, finish the video first. So to begin with the extra details, we'll use our silver paint to subtly pick out the raised areas of the armor and chains. Now don't go crazy, just add a little touch here and there with your detail brush and it will really come alive. You can also use the silver to highlight some of the gold areas of the stuff. Just lightly touch the areas of the spikes and drag your brush across any areas you'd like to look like scratched metal. Now the metal has been touched up, we'll make the red a little bit more vibrant. To do this, I'll add a touch of yellow into the red paint, mix it well with a tiny touch of water and start highlighting the prominent parts of the coat. Avoid any of the recesses and that way the nice shade will show through, adding contrast. Now as you're watching me do this, just a quick note about the reds in this series. I've had a few comments saying that my reds were actually orange, and while I'd like to blame the colour temperature of my footage, there's actually another reason. I'm partially red-green colourblind, so while I can see obvious reds and greens like blood and grass, I struggle to see the richness of those colours beyond just how bright they are. And before you unsubscribe from a painting tutorial guy that actually can't see colours, I hope this actually maybe gives you a bit more confidence in your own painting. If you think my models look good, you could probably make them look even better. Anyway, sorry for that little tangent, here's what the rogue psychers look like once we've accented the reds. And now we'll add some depth to the skin. Make up the same bright flesh tone we used before when we base coated the skin, but this time we're going to use our standard brush to apply a very light dry brush. Get some paint on your brush and dry it off thoroughly, and gently wipe the brush across the skin of the models. Using your standard brush will give you better accuracy than your big dry brush, but treat it nicely, you don't want to be too vigorous with your main brush. And when you're doing this, if you highlight any areas that you didn't mean to, like the mouth on this guy for example, use a bit of thinned down brown paint to mask your mistakes. As you can see, this is a really easy, effective way of bringing out details on faces with barely any effort and no precision brushwork. Although that's as far as I want to take it in this video, if you wanted to add some crazy glowing energy effects to their eyes, you could maybe follow my glowing blue effects without an airbrush tutorial video. It's the most popular video on my channel at the moment, so you've probably already seen it, but it would be a nice effect to add on these models if you had the time. Anyway, if you've been following along with these videos, you now have all 35 of the Blackstone Fortress enemies painted. I really hope you've enjoyed the series so far actually, and a few people have been asking me how they could support Midwinter Minis, and I thought a really simple way, at least as this channel is still young, is just to add a PayPal donate button. You can find it in the video description or on the about page of my channel. 
absolutely no pressure though. Uh, give what you want. Anything I receive from this, I'll put back into the channel, whether it's new minis, paints, or equipment. In the next video, I'll show you a really fast, effective way of painting the bases of your Blackstone Fortress models, and I've got a couple of secret little videos on the way before we move on to painting the heroes. So I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.